Welcome to Marine View Church Online. My name is Gary Hundrup, and I'm filling in this week for Pastor Jesse Skivington. Marine View seeks to go deeper with Jesus and reach wider with his love. When Pastor Jesse emailed me wondering if I could speak this Sunday, he included the theme for this Sunday, and I'm going to repeat it verbatim, because it clearly states a healthy response to a life with Jesus. Here is the theme. In Jesus, we are invited to live out our restored life by loving and serving others and participating in God's reconciling and restoring activity. The new year is a great opportunity to reflect on our life in Christ and how we are doing at loving and serving and helping others find peace and restoration and how we are working toward a more beautiful and just world that points forward to the kingdom of God. Another way to state this is to say, in Jesus, a healthy, restored person grows, thrives, and reaches out to others so they will experience restoration and health. Here in December, the message is focused on, first, as humans, we were designed for good. Second, we were damaged by evil. Third, we are restored for better. The base behind today's call understands God has not left us. We just celebrated Jesus' birth, and one constant refrain comes from the concept of Emmanuel. God is with us. God has not left us. Instead, through Jesus, God is with us. Jesus came to restore us and move us forward. No matter what has happened to us or what we have done to ourselves, God loves us and wants a life with us. As we have been restored by Jesus the Savior, then Jesus calls us to a life of loving, serving, reconciling, and restoring others in our life and world. I will take a few verses this morning for insights on what it means for us to be set out to heal. In Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, it reads, If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from His love, if any fellowship with His Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete, being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. The hallmark of a person restored through Jesus comes through a genuine love and compassion lived out in our daily lives. Probably the greatest privilege in our life comes through walking with another person so that person can experience peace and restoration with Jesus. So where do I find a person to walk with for healing in his or her life? It begins first in our own home. Our parents, partners, spouses, children, siblings, all family members with which we engage. Then work, places we serve, places we play, neighbors we know. Basically, any other human with whom we have contact. Jesus calls us to love and serve anyone with whom we have interaction. Recently, I went to Walgreens for a passport photo. I mention this because a person who helped me was amazingly nice, kind, and efficient. Here is a Christmas season, which I cannot imagine is much fun for anyone working in retail sales. Yet this person was so not kind, nice, and efficient that I went away from that experience thinking I need to be more like that person in my casual interactions. Living a life seeking to serve others comes in response to receiving healing and wholeness through our relationship with Jesus. Loving and serving others is a choice. In 1 John chapter 4, verses 11 through 12, we read, Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete. When we love and serve another person, it is a choice we make. It is an action we take. God's love involves action and not a feeling. 
Healthy parents understand this concept. A parent seeing their children fighting over who gets to play with the toy rarely feels love. They rarely say, I am so delighted my children yell at each other over who gets to play with Lincoln Logs. Love is an action that seeks to make peace and reconciliation and takes effort and work. Living this type of love and service expresses itself best when we have allowed ourselves to be filled with God in our lives. Back in the mid-1980s, I worked with youth ministry. We had recently purchased a retired school bus that was supposedly in good working order. We were taking about 25 high school youth on a ski trip for a weekend. Prior to the trip, I was in a great place in my walk with Jesus. I thought prior to the trip that no matter what, it would be a good weekend. I could not imagine anything going so wrong to wreck the trip. It was a Friday after school as the kids had gotten out and we left from Bremerton going to Buck Creek close to Crystal Mountain. It was evening as we were coming up a hill and I believe we were going through Bonnie Lake. A car pulled up beside our bus honking their horn. The person driving our bus opened up his window and the other person yelled at us that fire was coming out of the back of our bus. So we pulled over at a 7-Eleven type place. We told the kids to file off the bus. I and the advisors got out, opened up the hood, and we could see fire in the engine. We grabbed a fire extinguisher, put out the fire. It was dark and raining, so it was hard to see exactly what caused the fire. It became clear that someone needed to go under the bus and look up at the engine. Unfortunately, the bus and the engine was parked over a large mud puddle. It took about one second for me to realize that as the associate pastor, I was the only person paid to be here on this trip. So I went under the bus, and I can still remember the feeling of cold water rushing under my coat and under my shirt and down my pack. Once I was under the engine, I realized that one of the alternator belts had developed friction and caught on fire. About the same time, a high school girl not associated with our group had pulled her car over to see how we were doing. Anyway, it turned out she was a pretty good mechanic, and she got us another alternator belt, and she actually replaced it for us. As a side note, I have often thought about that high school girl who did not know us. She figured out we had a problem, not too difficult to guess, since our hood was up, our high school students were standing around, and I was laying under the bus in the mud. She could have gone on her way. But she knew she had mechanical skills, and she showed the love of God to us by stopping, taking time out of her day, asking if we could use some help, and then helping us. For me, her kindness showed to us that is a kindness that I have never forgotten. Back to the bus. After the alternator belt was replaced, we were able to start at the bus and continue on our way. Unfortunately, about 20 minutes later, we had the same problem and had to pull the bus over again. Turns out it was not the belt that needed replacing, but the alternator had slowly frozen up, causing friction on the belt. We found a pay phone nearby, called the people at Buck Creek, and they offered to bring some vans down to pick up our students and take them to the camp. We were out in some open fields and had to wait for our kids to be ferried back to Buck Creek. I was soaking and freezing from crawling in the mud puddle under the bus, so I had one of the male advisors go with me so I could change clothes. As I mentioned before, it was dark. I thought we'd walked a long ways from the road and away from the bus, and I began to change clothes when all of a sudden, a car's headlights came around a corner from the highway and fully lit me up with just my skivvies. I dove to the ground, which was muddy, and made the situation worse. After the car passed, I quickly tried to dry off best I could and put on what few dry clothes I had left. As an aside, the advisor with me nearly fell down from laughing so hard. Eventually, we got to the camp that night. Now, I mention that event because it was one of the few times in my life where I was so filled with God's love that the events of that evening did not take away from having a positive, caring, and compassionate service-oriented spirit. When I crawled under the bus into the mud puddle, I did not feel like doing it. It was simply the right action to take at that time. When the car caught me unintentionally flashing them as I was trying to change clothes, I did not have a positive vibe. 
I was briefly worried someone might call the newspapers about this associate pastor streaking through fields late at night. At another stage in my life, I might have become very grumpy and irritated with all the challenges that came up that night. But when we make time in our lives for Jesus to fill us, then we have the will and capacity to share that love and compassion with others in spite of the circumstances we may encounter. A parent cleaning up after his or her child who just got sick all over the car or the bed or the couch or on a plane flight is not feeling a positive vibe. But a caring, healthy parent will take care of his or her child first, then cleans up the mess in a compassionate manner. They are not enjoying that experience, but they can still exhibit God's love and care in the midst of a difficult time. A person not filled with God's love may yell at his or her child rather than support the sick child. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 7, we have a definition of love. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil or rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. This coming new year presents the opportunity to reflect on how we are doing, living a life of love and service. Our actions reveal how we express God's love in this world. Love is patient. Love is kind. Those two phrases alone give an incredible measurement of our relationship with God and our ability to share love in this world. If I am impatient and unkind, then I am not serving and caring for others. If I am easily angered, then I am not reflecting God's love. If I keep a record of wrongs, then I am letting bitterness interfere with my ability to love. Thou growth from living with Christ in our heart will result in us walking with others so they too may experience Jesus' healing and wholeness. And in that process, they and us will experience the peace and justice of God moving toward a world that points towards the kingdom of God. When we pray the Lord's Prayer together, one part of it says, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our call is to live here on earth like we would live in heaven. Imagine I'm in heaven in my car at a stoplight. The light turns green and the car in front of me does not immediately move. I wait two seconds and then blast my horn and start yelling at the person in front of me to start driving. Jesus then walks up to me while I'm honking the horn and yelling. I'm not exactly sure what Jesus would say to me, but I imagine it would be something along the lines, blasting your horn and yelling at the car in front of you is not how we reflect God's love here in heaven, and it's not how we should reflect it here on earth. The call in our lives is to love and serve others, leading to reconciliation, pointing toward the kingdom of God. For better or for worse, our relationship with Jesus is readily apparent in how we interact with anyone else. We can easily measure the light or darkness in our own life by how we treat others. I really don't like what I just said, but unfortunately it's true. And if I want to honor God, then I will be honest about myself. I do not like the sentence I'm about to repeat because sometimes it reveals in me a negativity that is going on in my own heart. Here is the sentence again. We can easily, easily measure the light or darkness in our own life by how we treat others. My hope as we enter this new year will be for each of us to intentionally seek to love and serve others. My hope is we can be honest with ourselves and remove barriers that keep us from fully loving and serving others. In the same way, I hope we can add actions that move us to being more loving and compassionate. Have you ever watched a sporting event on TV and then after your team lost found you were grumpy with everyone around you? Fortunately, I have done that. If I put myself in a situation where I'm likely to become a more grumpy and and irritating person, then maybe I should put myself Maybe I should not put myself in that situation. On the other hand, if there are actions that move you toward being a more loving and compassionate person, then make more time for those actions in your life. I have a special playlist of Christian music I listen to when I am particularly distressed or concerned. 
I find as I listen to that music, and usually I do it when I'm by myself so I can meditate while listening to it, then I begin to feel calmer and a greater sense of hope. I begin to remember God is with me and will see me through whatever is happening in my life. I shared earlier about remaining positive during the ski bus breakdown. Unfortunately, I have far too many, too many examples where I was not so filled with the love of Christ and was not loving and compassionate in my response to events and incidents in my life. I am also aware that during those times that I did not allow myself to be compassionate in those events of life, that my choice to be less caring towards others, that those actions would then be a hindrance for another person to see the reality of God's love. I know this morning that every one of us can think of times where we fell far short of expressing God's love to those around us. We just read that love does not keep a record of wrongs, and that applies to ourselves. Many of us beat ourselves up for past hurts we may have inflicted on others. Yet, all of us at times fall far short of the love of God he desires. But God calls us to move forward. God forgives us. Jesus is with us. While I know every one of us at times has fallen short of sharing the fullness of God's love, I also know that every one of us at times has shared that full love of God. My hope is that we can look at this new year, you can remember those times where you did forgive, those times where you were patient, those times where events around you were total chaos and you kept a positive, compassionate heart. Remember those times you kept that positive, compassionate heart. Remember those memories and compassion so that you can see that, seek to have that same spirit in this new year. Be intentional, be very intentional about what can fill your life with Christ. Whether music, meditation, exercise, close friends, what bring out the best in you. Whatever it may be that allows you to be recharged with Jesus Christ. In closing, first, out of God's love for us, we are called to love and serve others so that they may find peace and restoration and move toward the kingdom of God. Second, as God defines it, love is our choices and actions. Third, we need to be honest and intentional about what we do to allow God's love to fill us so we can have the will and capacity to love and serve others as Jesus calls us to love and serve. And fourth, remember we will fail at times, but Jesus is with us. He forgives us and calls us to keep moving forward, loving and caring for those we know in our world.